We will now hear Angelina Jolie, Special Envoy for UNHCR. The women we honor today would probably deny that they're brave because they come from a country where bravery is commonplace. The bravery to go back to your school after it was bombed, killing your classmates. The bravery to go back to work as a doctor or policewoman or human rights defender after your female colleagues were assassinated. The courage to go back on TV and report the news after your fellow journalists, male and female, were murdered for telling the truth. The courage as an artist to push boundaries of what society says is suitable behavior for a woman. Or the strength to leave an abusive marriage when women before you have been killed for just that or less. I was on Pakistan's border with Afghanistan 20 years ago with Afghan refugees, many who had already been displaced for decades. I met Afghan fathers who'd been beaten for sending their daughters to school, who had fled to give them a chance of an education. And girls from those camps grew up to become lawyers and activists who returned to Afghanistan to try to build a better future for their country. And some were murdered for it. Women like Fatima Khalil. When so many people you know have been killed or imprisoned or forced from their homes, and when so many families around you struggle with poverty, maybe you don't consider yourself brave. But the bravery of the women of Afghanistan over generations and the men who have supported them is historic. It means we cannot lose hope, even when everything may seem lost, as it does at times today, when young women who take part in peaceful protests are being taken from their homes at night at gunpoint, and young girls are being sold into marriage because of the total collapse of the economy and the whole country in humanitarian crisis. So I call on the de facto authorities in Afghanistan to reopen all schools, to enable girls to sit the exams that they missed last year, to release Tamana Pariani and Parwana Ibrahim and the other women held in detention, and to let women participate fully and freely in work and politics and society. And I say to them, if you will not do this, what is it you're afraid of? If you're afraid of the minds of Afghan women, you're too late. You can turn a woman away from work. You can deny her an education. You can tell her how to dress. Maybe you can even frighten her into staying home. But you cannot extinguish her capacity for thought. You cannot erase her will to do everything she can so her children have a better future even if she never knows a single day of freedom herself. I call on leaders worldwide to hold those in power in Afghanistan to account for their treatment of women and civil society, to ensure that humanitarian aid reaches women and women's led organizations and to stop violent pushback of vulnerable refugees that is taking place at some borders. And I hope that free thinking people everywhere will help to ensure that the women of Afghanistan are not forgotten. Learn their names and their stories. Read about Quadria Yassini and her sons, Freshta Koistani and her brother, Malali Maiwand, and the countless other brave women who have been murdered in the struggle for a free Afghanistan. Look up the art of Shamsia Hassani and Rada Akbar. Learn about Maria Krami, Shaharazad Akbar, Zarifa Ghaffari, Ansia Shaheed, and the seven other brave Afghan women nominated for the Shakrov Prize. Follow the work of women like Huda Kamush and Mabuba Saraj, 
on the front lines of Afghanistan. Think of all the women whose names we will never know, but who have resisted in their own way for generations. And please support the millions of Afghan refugees who are thirsting for knowledge and opportunity and freedom and safety. And to all Afghan women, those brave, free-thinking ladies of grace, determination and strength, please know you have made an indelible mark on your country and on history. What you have achieved over decades may be suppressed, but it cannot be erased. Systems built on oppression do terrible harm, but they do not last forever. In the words of one daughter of Afghanistan, you can cut down the flower, but nothing can stop the coming of the spring. <laughs>